church marketing sucks. You know it, I know it, there's an entire website about it. But why? Lack of staffing, lack of training, lack of time, maybe, probably, definitely the last one. But I don't think you need a large communications team to run an effective ads at your church. Most churches, I think, are just asking the wrong questions. Today, we're gonna to talk about what those questions are and how you can start running ads at your church that actually work for your services and events. Welcome to Black Bar. Hi, I'm Caleb, and today we're going to talk about what I would consider the most important part of the process of creating effective ads, brainstorming. It's very easy to get caught up in the execution phase of advertising. Color theory, typography, jump cuts. I'm not saying these are important, but these are message delivery tools. If your message sucks, it doesn't matter how pretty it is, no one is going to care. Think of how your pastor prepares his messages. Imagine he spent little to no time in preparation and focused all of his energy on the actual delivery on Sunday. Flashing lights, uh, stage presence, emotional highs and lows. These things are great message delivery tools, but without a good message, it's really all just smoke and mirrors. So what's the message? What's your message? What are you trying to say? If you haven't thought about this before, your answer is likely, we have an event coming up, or churches at Sunday at 11 a.m. That's great. I don't care. Not me, that is. We don't care. Uh, your audience doesn't care. On average, your audience is subjected to up to 10,000 different branded advertisements every single day. Half of them are in your church bulletin. Even your most loyal church members don't have enough space in their brains to remember every single flyer and announcement and post and mailer that you put out. You need to fight for their attention every single day. Your competition is not the church down the street or Hillsong or Bethel. Your competition is Coca-Cola, Chuck E. Cheese, Target. Any company fighting for your audience's attention on Sunday morning and throughout the week is on the field and they're winning. Great ideas stick. Your goal is to get your audience to think about your ad for longer than it actually took them to read it. Yes, you can do this with a flashy flyer or a funny promo video, but we all remember funny commercials for products that we've forgotten about. If the idea you're marketing isn't strong, the sticky part of your ad will be the punchline, not the product. Good flyers can stick, good videos can stick, but good ideas always stick. Let's break down what I would consider a very typical church event flyer. We have the title of the event, the date, the time, and location, a few details describing what the event will be, and a place to RSVP. Sure, we'll pretty it up with some visuals, fonts, and colors we think our target audience will like, and then we'll send it off for printing. There, done. We have successfully told our audience about our event. Unfortunately, like I was saying before, this really isn't good enough. You see, and this is kind of the big point, it's not your job to tell your audience about your events. It's your job to sell them your events. Anyone can read off a list of details and dates. Your job is to convince them the event is worth their time. Sell, don't tell. It's my motto, it's my team's motto, and it should be yours too. Let's look at some examples. I personally have never seen a billboard for a new iPhone that just lists out the features, specs, battery life of their newest model with the address to the nearest Apple store and its hours. When Apple advertises their devices, they show you what your life could be with Apple in it. Simple, memorable, luxury, and incredibly, unfathomably overpriced. McDonald's doesn't give you the ingredients and recipe for their Big Mac when they run ads on TV. They show you slow motion shots of their burgers being grilled and seasoned and perfectly served in a way that is literally scientifically designed to make you hungry. They're not just telling you about their phones and their burgers, they're selling them to you. That's what's missing in church advertising. We put all of our time and attention into catching people's eyes and forget why we're trying to catch their eyes in the first place. So how do we come up with this great message? 
That's a great question. Let me answer that question with three questions. Three questions you should ask every single time you're communicating with your audience. Who's the audience? What do you want them to feel? And what is your X factor? First, who is your audience? Be specific. Be incredibly specific. This will not come natural. Your first thought is likely, my audience is everyone, or all of the women, or parents of young children. Let's take men's ministry for example. Men's ministry covers one of the widest ranges of demographics of any ministry in your church. Technically speaking, most men's ministries range from all men age 18 until they die. We have millennials and boomers and seniors and everything in between. There is no such thing as an event that will be equally attractive to every one of those audiences. If you think I'm wrong, do yourself and your ministry a favor and talk to some of the demographics that you don't belong to. Find out what they like. Do market research. You'll soon come to find that many men have wildly different interests, lifestyles, and priorities. At my church, we recently had a men's event that featured a barbecue feast, basketball and games, teaching, and an actual mechanical bowl. It was undoubtedly a men's event, but it wasn't every man's event. It wasn't my event, and that's totally fine. That event was for a 34-year-old red-blooded mechanic that loves rock and roll, meat, and his truck. One day, he hopes to own a 67 Camaro that stays in his garage for 360 days a year, and he has never quite given up his dream of playing in the NFL. His name is Bruce. Bruce is not real. I made him up, but now I know who I'm selling to. The wider your audience, the narrower your goalposts. Keep your focus tight and sell your product to the guy that wants it the most. Nail down your audience, not just their age and their sex and their profession. Tell me their hobbies. What are their dreams? Give them a name. The more you know about them, the easier it will be to sell to them. Second, what do you want them to feel? For as tricky and manipulative as advertising has gotten in the past hundred years, many ads still focus on trying to trigger any one of a short list of core instinctual emotions. Restaurants sell with hunger. Insurance agencies sell with fear. Nike sells with competitive pride. Appealing to your audience's emotions is an incredibly powerful tool but it can be a very dangerous one too. I likely don't need to tell you about the general slimy reputation of marketing people. Many people are untrusting of large companies and organizations because of marketers who have exploited people's emotions to sell them products. Here's the deal. Manipulation and influence are sisters. The difference is your intent. I'm not trying to make you feel jealous so you'll buy my t-shirt and make me richer. I'm not trying to make you feel angry so you'll vote for my candidate and give me more power. I'm trying to help you feel something that could bring you to the life-saving knowledge of Jesus. If appealing to emotion is wrong, then every song you've heard, book you've read, movie you've seen, and every sermon that has ever been preached is a sin. What matters is our intent. Now, what makes this question considerably harder than the first is that there's no one right answer and there's often many, many wrong ones. For example, a couple of years ago, my church hosted a conference that focused on educating the public on sex trafficking, how to protect yourself, identify warning signs, and help those who've been caught up in it. It's a great event, a super important one, but it's not an event I'm going to advertise with sunshine and flowers and unicorns. The fear of the danger of being sex trafficked is a powerful one, and we use the emotion of fear to communicate the importance of the conference. The emotion we picked didn't just make the ad stand out, it made the event stand out. It made the event sticky. The last question is an often missed, incredibly important one. What is your X factor? What is it about your event, not your flyer, not your video, that will get people to remember it? Let's look at the men's event from earlier. It featured barbecue, teaching, basketball and games, and a mechanical riding bull. I think we can all agree that most men are coming for the barbecue. That being said, barbecue is not incredibly unique. 
We've had men barbecues before. We've had men's breakfast before. Relatively speaking, they're the same event with different foods. What's unique about this men's event is that darn mechanical bowl. It might not be the most attractive highlight to most men, including myself, but it is certainly the most memorable one. That's why we gave it prime real estate in the name, on the flyer, and in the promo video. It's easy to forget about another men's barbecue, but you will never forget about that mechanical bowl. That being said, it's very likely that the event or service that you're marketing does not have an X factor. Most events don't. If possible, and only if early enough, talk with your client department about adding something to the event. It might be a giveaway, a unique entertainment, anything to grab attention. Identify your X factor and make sure it's the first thing your audience sees and it's the last thing that they remember. Every time you're communicating with an audience, answer these three questions. What is your audience? What do you want them to feel? And what is your X factor? Eventually, they'll become second nature. Make sure the answers are clear and understood by everyone who is contributing to the execution of your message. I guarantee that the ads you make will be more effective, more memorable, and way, way more fun to make. Thank you so much for watching this video. This is our very first video on the Black Bar channel, but I promise there is much, much more to come. Uh, please like and subscribe and share with anybody you think could benefit from this content, and we'll see you in the next video.